Thank you, Jody. Thank you so much, and thank you to PFLAG. I am so incredibly honored to be with you today as we celebrate our nation's progress. We recognize our work ahead and recommit to our cause. True equality, true equality for all Americans, regardless of who they are and who they love. Like you, this is a cause that is incredibly personal to me and my family. Um, I actually gave my first LGBT rights speech in high school at the age of 16. Now, as you can imagine, this was a rather unusual topic in 1975 in Winona, Minnesota, a town where hog and cattle production was one of the um, most hotly sought after courses in my high school. But I knew at that time, all of 16, that I felt very strongly that discrimination against people because of who they are was wrong. And looking back, I think part of the reason I was felt so strongly about this is because I knew on some level that my beloved older brother, a year and a half older than I was, that Jamie was probably gay. However, it was not until, actually I realized it was 1978, this is what happens as you get older, it wasn't even 1979, it was 1978. We were both in college and he, would, he met me at the airport. I had to stay later at school, and he met me at the airport, and he, he picked me up, and he was so excited, and I could just see this incredible transformation with him. And we're driving, the very long drive from Minneapolis back to Winona, and he said, oh, I've got something to tell you. I've got something to tell you. Guess. Well, there was only one thing that popped into my head. Um, it was 1978, and I was pretty sure I had a pretty good guess. But if I was wrong, it might not have gone well. And I said, no, tell me. Oh, yes. Like, no, Jamie, really, tell me. <laughs> and I said, I've met somebody. And I said, I know. <laughs> um, and then he told me about what it was like to be in love. And it was such a revelation for him. And I wished I'd been able to take that because he talked about so powerfully and so personally about saying, you know what, Elizabeth, I never could understand why you wanted to spend time with your boyfriend. And now I get it. You just want to be with the person you love. And I wished I'd been able to take this and to play it to every person I have heard say, you know, you shouldn't be allowed to, it's wrong, all of those hateful things, and say, would you deny someone you know or someone you've never met, the opportunity to feel that most powerful and special of all human emotions, love and devotion. And I will never forget the joyfulness of that moment back in, in 1978. But I looked at my brother, and hearing that joy and that excitement, and I said, who else have you told? And he said, Mom. Oh, and how did that go? <laughs> some of you, and some of you, as Jody has already referenced, may know my mother, Betsy Henderson. And my mother is the first to admit that when she heard that news, she wasn't exactly sure how she felt about it. And she struggled. She struggled with ignorance and fear and concern. She struggled with her religious convictions. And it was actually quite a hot topic in 1978 in the Presbyterian Church. It was something that she and my grandmother and I had, had rather spirited discussions about earlier that year. Um, my grandmother and I were on one side and my mother was actually on the other in 1978. So I knew it was going to be difficult. But I knew this too. She loved her son. And because she loved her son, she accepted and embraced him as her son and as a man and as who he really was. And she didn't stop there. She took the time to learn and find out more and to understand what the inequality was that he was really facing and what LGBT folks all over the country were facing. And of course, as you know, one of the first places she turned to was Be Flag. And also the bookstore in town that she had to send away for, and this is pre-Amazon, right? And it would come in little brown paper wrappings, because I can also assure you, 
in uh, Winona, Minnesota in 1978, there weren't a whole lot of gay rights, understand my son who's gay, books out there on the shelves. Um, and that journey, really assisted by friends and families in PFLAG, helped her to become a passionate champion for equality. She stepped up and she became active on the local level in this amazing, wonderful organization to advocate for her family and for your family and for all families. And her journey and her commitment led her to becoming president of this wonderful, amazing organization. And my mother's example of her advocacy and her leadership have inspired me throughout my own career in public service and continues to inspire me every day. My own improbable path from Supreme Court lawyer working on AIDS policies in the 1980s to PTA mom with three kids in the 1990s and 2000s to local town council and to state representative and this past year to the U.S. Congress. I've worked hard every day to model and to support love and respect for every person all over this country and around the world. And I was thrilled as a state representative to have the opportunity to proudly cast my vote for full marriage equality in the state of Connecticut. The first day I believe the first day where the legislature voted fully to do that, assisted by a nudge from the Supreme Court. <laughs> but nevertheless, it was one of my proudest moments in the legislature. And earlier this year, I was incredibly honored as a brand new member of Congress to join my colleagues in signing on to our MECAS brief, urging the Supreme Court to overturn DOMA and end the shame of that decision. Now, when I was asked to sign on to the brief, I asked one of the attorneys who had helped draft the brief, said, you know, what sources did you use? She was a little curious why I kept asking so many questions. She didn't know I'd been a Supreme Court lawyer, so I wanted to know what she was doing. And she told me in the course of her research, she had gone back and reviewed all of the transcripts from the congressional hearings on DOMA. And she said she was particularly struck by this testimony of a woman who was the president of PFLAG. And DOMA was being debated in the Senate in 1996. And I said, well, do you remember the name of the witness? And she said, I do. And I said, was it Nancy Henderson? And she looked startled. She said, why, yes, it was. And I smiled and I said, that's my mom. <laughs> so you can imagine, I wasn't playing hard to get, but I was, I really did want to sort of know and prod a little bit. So I very proudly signed my name onto that brief. And my mother, when she testified in 1996, and I had the opportunity to review that testimony last night, she testified not just as an advocate, but as a parent. And she shared her struggles of her son, my brother, what he faced with discrimination in healthcare and employment. She shared her love for her son. She shared the story of how she, about how when my brother was very ill and was unconscious, and his now husband, but then longtime partner, Ray O'Loughlin, accompanied, took him to the hospital, and how at the hospital in Denver, they said, we'll take it from here, and he said, that's my partner. I said, basically, you're nobody. My brother's a lawyer. They had signed all the paperwork. It did not matter. They said, no, you have no status here. And, and that story, unfortunately, was not persuasive in 1996, but it was persuasive this year. Her, the story of her journey from fear and confusion to acceptance and to understanding. And as she spoke about our nation's own experience, she was saying all across, this is her quote, all across this country, we as Americans are on a journey of understanding. In the almost two decades since my mother testified before Congress, we have come a long way in that journey. 
And like all of you, I was overjoyed in June of this year when the court made the historic decision to, to end DOMA and to correct this moral and constitutional injustice in this country. And on that day, I felt particularly proud to be Mitzi Henderson's daughter and Jamie Henderson's sister and Ray O'Loughlin's sister-in-law. I'm proud of the contribution that she and so many advocates like her and like you have made to our country's progress towards true and full equality for everyone. Progress is not simply the result of politics, and as we've seen this last year, politics is often in arrears of where the country actually is. Progress is also a result of something far, far more powerful. It's a result of love. And I know that we still have much work to do for true equality, but I know that despite the challenges ahead, we will succeed. Because we advocate for a reason far more powerful than politics. We advocate for love. For love for people we love, and for love for the people they love. We are here because we love our siblings, our children, our parents, and our friends, and because we love our sons and daughters, we won't allow our sons and daughters to face discrimination in school because of who they are, or to face bullying because of who their friends are. Because we love our sisters and brothers, we won't allow them to face discrimination at work, and we will work to get and uh, and uh, and uh, done. <laughs> And then to discrimination with Because we love our families and our friends, we will make sure that they have the same rights and benefits as every American. There is no force more powerful than advocacy driven by love. And the successes of this year, including just this week, New Jersey becoming the 14th state. These successes are a testament to the power of love and the importance of persistence. Your love and your persistence. Your advocacy has helped to take this country forward, to take us so far towards advancing that understanding that my mother spoke about in front of a recalcitrant Senate in 1996. We have come far, not as quickly as we would want, but much farther than any of us would have hoped in the year 2013. And that love and that persistence will take us so much farther. farther. I am so honored to be with you here today, to stand with you in the U.S. Congress in the fight for equality. So proud to be Mitzi and Tom Henderson's daughter and Jamie Henderson's sister and Ray O'Loughlin's sister-in-law. Thank you for all you do. I hope you have a wonderful conference. And again, thanks and congratulations. It's an amazing year. You're an amazing group of people. But the work is not done. Thank you.